Good evening, everybody. Today is uh, Monday, February 8th. Uh, this is the uh, Recreation Board meeting for Monday, February 8th uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to do a quick roll call. Um, I see we have Kevin. We have Jessica. We have Nancy. We have Aaron. We have Donna, our, our rec director. We have Robin, Dan, and Don. All right. Are we missing anybody? You got Mike down the bottom. Hi. Yep. No. Perfectly the Brady I'm here. I'm just Gordon. driving home from work, so. Oh. Oh, and jo was that Jordy? That was Jordy. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, Jordy. And we also have a guest. Uh, we have John Torsha from uh, CPC, who's the chair of the CPC, who will be joining us in a little bit. We're going to go over a little bit of a presentation about community preservation and where recreation comes into play with community preservation. But at first, let's go over the meeting minutes that Nancy was able to send out. Nancy, thank you again for getting the meetings together. Greatly appreciate it. Come. All right. Does anybody have any changes? Right. Aaron caught one. Um, go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, um, I believe that the final decision for the, the liaison for me was field hockey and softball. And then Robin, because she didn't have anything assigned yet, was going to do football and cheerleading. Okay. I think that's how we left it. Okay. You are correct. She's going to help so me. So Robin's going to be, Robin's going to be what I had for you and you're going to be no. field hockey. No. no, I think we're going to flip. I, I think that we're going to, Jess is going to take yeah. football and Robin's going to take Pine Knoll. Because I was talking to Robin and Jess and Jess is already doing football and, and Robin's very involved in Pine Knoll with her son. But Jess can't serve on the board with football and be on this board. For, I, did, for, I wasn't aware of that. She's, she's a representative of ELF right now. You're our ELF representative. So, I mean, Wait. you're ELF. But isn't that completely separate from, that's private. So isn't that separate from this? But it's, she, she's the representative of ELF on this board. But she already serves on the football board. She's got a position on their board. But if she's positioned on elf, maybe somebody else should be the liaison. The elf? Um, I know zero about football and cheerleading, so just FYI on that. I, I actually would greatly appreciate having a another person with me for football and cheerleading, just because we're bridging cheerleading and football together. So somebody, anybody, Jessica, if you want to take it with cheerleading. I can do whatever you need. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. I'll, I'll continue with football. Okay. So now that you've got me, Aaron, you're, we have to correct what I had for you. So you are going to be field hockey and softball. Yes. Okay, Robin, your pinole and pinole. Okay, that'll be going tonight's minute. And Jessica, you're going to be football and cheerleading. cheerleading. Okay, got it. Any other changes? All right. Anybody like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes as changed? Anybody? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting on January 22nd. No, sorry. 25th? Yes. That is correct. As ended. Second that. Okay, any more discussion? 
All those in favor? We'll do roll call. Kevin, oh, looks like passes unanimously. Roll call done. All right, on, on to the director's report. Yeah, I'm gonna go dark here for a second so I can switch screens um, and re make sure my bifocals are focused here on the screen. Okay, so the, I, and I sent some of this to you um, earlier. I'm sorry it came out so late, but I've added a few things, so I'll, I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, we all know that Mother Nature has been fairly good to us about the ice rink, uh, other than the snow. Um, but I want to give a shout out to some people that have been very helpful. One morning, I went over to check the ice, and uh, Mike Fox, a basketball coach, had brought his own shovel, and... Um, he was out there shoveling on his own, which was really great. Um, Kevin, Tom, Don, Bruce. I mean, everybody's been out there. It's great. Uh, lessons are going well. Bruce and Goldman and Eric Emmett have been doing lessons, and we've had absolutely no, no um, uh, concerns with that. Uh, the, the staff at the rink are also doing a tremendous job. They're helping the skaters and maintaining the ice. Jessica, Robin, Nancy, and Bruce are doing a great job uh, managing questions on Facebook, which is uh, is always fun. Uh, that being said, snow is on the way. And tonight, later on, if we could maybe take a second and see if anybody wants to take a shift, that would be great. Uh, basketball started last week. The volunteer coordinators filled in questions from the coaches about practice ideas. The feedback from the coaches has been positive. The basketball board and coaches are just doing a tremendous job. Rec monitors are spraying down the basketballs after each practice. We have another meeting this Thursday just to, to um, talk about how do we think it's going. And I'll let Don and Dan uh, talk a little bit more about that. We had a very productive baseball meeting on uh, February 31st, and I feel like we're in really good hands with Joe Williams, Joe Piccinelli, Chad Rule, Mike Carlin, Joe Manley, and several other volunteers. I also want to give a big thanks to Bill Burks and Rich Bedard for helping with the transition. And I'll let Kevin um, talk a little bit more about that and, and mention anyone that I've left out. Marlins are still on tracks, pretty much the same as last week, but Nancy has some stuff to tell us on that. Spring registrations are still being um, we're still taking them. The registration numbers have been uh, interesting. Soccer numbers are low, but girls' lack is, lacks is full. Um, softball for the older girls is full. Baseball numbers are looking pretty good, but if you want to go into specifics, uh, specifics um, on a sport, we can do that. Kristen Foster and Jessica Stacy have been a huge help during this time that we're down staff. Um, they're picking up really quick and just, they're just saving us. And Jordy and I couldn't do it without them. Helene and Bill Towsley, and I hope I'm saying that right, donated another DIY Zamponi so we could have two going at the same time. Thanks to Steve Shanks who built it for them and gave it to us. Uh, I'm gonna let Jordy talk more about my rack when he gets home and online. Uh, and then Heritage Plan is in the CIP budget, and I'm looking, looking, and I'm excited to have Elf in place to start new fun that that fundraiser. I spoke to Mary today, and she has some ideas about the high school turf. She's going to do some research in this, on the situation and get back to us. Uh, that along with that, don't forget to attend our visionary session on this Saturday at ten, as we um, start digging into this master plan. And if I left you out on the information for that meeting, just let me know. And that's what I have. And, and like I said, when Jordy gets home, he's going to text me and I'm gonna, he's got some exciting stuff to talk about, but I'm going to let him cover that. Thanks. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Donna. A um, couple of tidbits that we'll, we'll do the roll call off of this or, or the roll decks of this as we go through this. Um, from an ice rink perspective, um, I'll just go back down the list. Ice rink perspective, we actually have a um, uh, Shelburne Falls Coffee Roasters volunteer today to allow us to utilize their water if we need to fill up over there to clean up, you know, clean up the ice. 
So they were very uh, thankful and to be and just welcome the opportunity to uh, to help out. They have a uh, firsthand view of all the activity over there, and they said it's been very positive in the coffee shop about the activity over there. The other thing I wanted to mention is there were some questions about how somebody could participate at the ice rink. All right. So Donna, maybe this is a great spot where we could maybe post something on, on their, on their wall about how to go to, you know, the, the recreation site and sign a waiver to be able to go skate at the rink. Maybe we should make that a little bit more readily available uh, around town. You know, not everybody's on, on a face tweet. Um, that's that's a good point, and that's something that Jordy is going to cover with my rec on how to do that. And so, um, but yes, I agree. Not everybody's connected to Facebook and all that stuff. And, and uh, but also informational flyers on how to utilize a skating rink, how to get get on there. Right. Got it. I know we have the COVID pro pro protocol guidelines, but do we have some laminate piece that can go on the fence? On how to register? Yeah. We, yes, we do. But I, I, there's they're pretty small. But they're every other that we have like how to how to do that how to get on and then how you know masks and then more information about donations and, and registering. But we it's probably small and with the snow now people I'll aren't walking around. I'll be honest with you. I I didn't see it. Okay, that's fair right enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's and great think, news. That's we become a very critical thing with going forward because I'll be honest, we have more words getting out of there. Uh, the other night, even the rifles hockey team didn't get ice time to practice, so they had eight kids out there. I'm not sure all of them were registered, but there weren't a lot on the ice, so the boys got their names and their numbers anyway. And then there was four or five that were registered. So there's more and more information going out. There more and more people want to be a part of it, and not everyone's registered, and that's where we know some. Problems can happen also, which we've had. So education. Okay. All right. So uh, basketball, Don and, and Mike, I don't know if you guys want to uh, jump in on what Donna filled us in in regards to basketball. I think it's Dan. Oh, Dan. Sorry. Yeah. I was, um, one week down and um, so far so good. I mean, Kids are excited. Um, it was pretty seamless as far as, you know, the parents dropping everybody off in the gym, went over the, you know, the, the COVID protocols. Um, everybody was fine with that. So I think we're just, you know, making sure we reinforce that, that messaging every, every practice every week. But for the most part, it's like we send out or I send out emails and uh, I don't hear anything back. So I'm assuming all is good if, you know, there's nothing there's no feedback. Excellent. Don, you want to give firsthand knowledge of like how practices kind of flow, maybe from an informational standpoint, so people in the community know from a COVID protocol. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing a 50 minute session. So in that 10 minute time period, we're having to monitor uh, spray and kind of wipe down the walls in between the teams coming in. And like Dan said, there has been a flawless transition of the teams going in and out. Um, uh, kind of the other team has been showing up about five minutes before, uh, their hourly time and the other teams out of there that there's five minutes left, 750 to 755 or, you know, five, 550 to 555 and they seem to be outside and the other teams coming in. So it's been pretty good. I did have one complaint from the, um, uh, the janitor at the site was complaining at least on Thursday that there were some teams that were staying a little late. So the, the transition was a little off there. So uh, I think we got to send an email out maybe just to uh, make sure people finish on time. Just reiterate that it's 50 minutes um, and they have to be out of there. Um, we were short on some balls too, and but I let Donna know about that. I believe she bought some or found some 27 and a halfs. Supposedly there's 28 and a half out there too, which we were showing on on Thursday. We had to use the bigger balls, but hopefully we we're, we're going to find those and get those into Birchland. Um, 
But other than that, everything's been going pretty good. I think we just got to also let the, know, the coaches know the spots that are open during the week so that people can start grabbing them. I think we got to get that that information out there. I had one coach grab a Saturday. There's actually three spots on Saturday. So I think we need to get the information of the four or five spots during the week and then those three spots on a weekend and should get things rolling even better. Excellent. Can I jump in there on the, the basketball? Um, we, we had some 28 and a half at the office that um, Christine blew up and took to Birchland today. And then we should get the 27 and a half in any day now. And we'll get those out to the schools also. And then uh, Chris Streeter wrote to me tonight about the rims at Birchland being high, too high for third and fourth grade. And we understand that that's a problem. Unfortunately, St. Mike's has the right um, height of rims and, and they're not renting this season. So we, we're going to have to kind of suffer through that one because uh, the, the Birchland rims, there's, they don't, they're not adjustable. Hey, Donna, do we, do we have any of those uh, portable basketball hoops that we had at Pine Knoll? We have the, the ones that we use for Biddy, but those are too small. Okay. All right. For, um, and we, and the reason we have the ones that we do is that the, the, the original ones that we had to hang on the rims for Biddy um, were broken and, and in bad repair. So. Okay. I just want to just piggyback onto what Don had mentioned earlier. Um, I think one of the things too, is if there are, you know, obviously with the weather being, you know, sort of chaotic, if there are times that Donna, are the coaches reaching out to you to see if they can get the makeups in and sort of what the time, like the available times are. I've yes, I've had some, but I think Don's right. We've got to do a better job of telling them the time slots. Um, and the other thing right now, what we could do is we could share the Google sheet and they can go in and I think visually see the spots, but then next, uh, starting on the 16th, when we go to my rec, they can actually go in and sign up for their spots online and they won't be dependent of calling the office and, uh, you know, going through that route. So I, I hope that helps the, the situation. Yeah, and if, if there's no school, so if there's cancellation, then the gyms will be accessible, correct? If there's no school, no no sports. That's, that's correct. No school, hey. no gym. Correct. Hi, Jordy. Like Bob Marley says. Hey. All right. All right, so we have Jordy on board. Um, next, we, uh, we're going to move on to baseball. Kevin, anything that Donna missed on? In regards to baseball and in a fantastic couple transition. good things if you can hear me i'm sorry my computer's a little slow um they are now officially a 501c3 they have that all set and all the paperwork has been submitted um they have a pretty healthy um account of savings that they're moving to people's bank um they're going to be running out of there okay. currently they you've heard the three positions they have the one thing they're short on is a treasurer at this time. So Joe Williams is standing as their treasurer also. Um, they have created, and it's actually pretty good look if you haven't seen or haven't heard yet, their own website also, which is uh, eastlongmeadowbaseball.org. Um, pretty impressive. It's early stages of it, but it does have some decent uh, photo photography on it, some other information on it that they're uh, trying to get word out. So signed up registered just interested in hearing about it it's out there and up and running and live right now um going into the actual uh, registrations as we said they're actually doing okay they are short in t-ball a little bit at this time but uh they're not concerned yet because that's in town um the jls programs each one of those seem to be doing very well registering wise hoping to create one more team or two at different age groups but they're doing well, but they're not sure what that season has in store at this time, when they're going to play because the field um, sharing and usage um, might be starting like they did last year, a little later in the year. Um, they're already concerned with the fields in town. They brought that up and they said, I know there's nothing we can do about it yet, but they wanted to know that they're already concerned for the fields. Um, Fundraise on their horizon. They have plenty of a couple different things they want to do to fundraise. 
Um, obviously too early yet and restrictions are not putting dates or any uh, timelines on them yet, but once a skills challenge, um, want to be their home run derby, a couple different things they're thinking. Um, but the one big concern they had was with the equipment and Donna could uh, jump in here too is regarding helmets and the COVID world that we're in and sharing of helmets and how they're hesitant to do that. And Donna mentioned, you know, cause almost all the kids have their own helmet or are given a helmet over the last couple of years in the league, in our town program, that maybe we can support that by giving them more helmets or getting more helmets. Uh, maybe Donna can elaborate on that a little further. Yeah, Donna. I did. I was on an email with Bill and Rich and by, uh, yeah, we will, if, if a, if a player does not have a, of a oh, helmet we we do have helmet helmets and if we need to purchase additional ones i will okay because i mean we normally have helmets for them so i don't think it's fair for us to say now you have to buy a helmet because of this but i think that you know since last season so many did buy their own helmets and with the supply that we have I think we're, we would be in good shape to loan out helmets that stay with the player versus sharing. So one one point I want to make of order, uh, Donna, is are you making sure that it's, you know, concussion protocol helmet, all the – like when the parents go out and purchase their own helmet, is that helmet compliant with all pro, uh, concussion protocols? That's a good question. Um I, we probably need to put out some information about that, but that um, is under the umpire's job to make sure that the helmet is correct. Okay. But I think that that's a good point that we should make that known before they purchase. I didn't know if that was our liability or an umpire at the site during it's, the game. It's on the umpire's, um, it's on the umpire's responsibility. Okay. Next, uh, if that's, if we're done with baseball, I'm going to move quickly to Nancy for Marlins. Oh, Kevin, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to bring up that we are, or I am, and I had talked to one or two people, and I mentioned to Tom also, my uh, ultimate goal of lights on the center field, I'm actually get an updated number from Musco with Donna and start pursuing what, how, where, and what it would entail. Um it is baseball. They would definitely probably benefit the most out of it, but it's not as baseball. It's soccer in the fall. It's a uh, mass mutual renting fields and, and using the fields for maybe two games instead of one game. It's a lot more than just baseball. So I'm just to actually get that up and running and we'll see how that goes and we'll share and keep you guys updated from a fundraising standpoint on their side, from what we can do in town and, uh, CPC even, who knows? So we'll, I'll keep you updated. It's a drive that we're start, I'm starting myself and trying to foster again. Also. I did, yeah, and I reached out to uh, Musco yesterday. I didn't hear from him, but I think along with that, it's a good idea to have um, the ideas that you want for Centerfield to be a part of that visionary visioning session and the master plan because we don't want to put – thousands of dollars into the field. We want it to be part of the, uh, the big picture. Excellent. Nancy, you're up next. Anything okay. Marlin? um, Marlins are on board to have their stroke and turn clinic from March 29th to April 23rd. They're going to have the participants sign up through the sports engine so that they can assure that the East Long Meadow swimmers get the first shot at the time slots that are available and um donna informed me that there is still a lifeguard shortage but she's working on that okay All right and speaking of employment opportunities and shortages and lifeguards um donna if you could you know since we've had great help with christine and jessica helping out the office is one i think the general public should know that we have two open spots potentially and how would somebody apply for those positions if it's out there uh, jordy mary and i are still working um, with the job descriptions because we'd like to use this time to um, make some changes from those descriptions that it's the same descriptions that 
were in place when Jordy and I came. And I think that because of the changes that we've made in the department and the growth that we've made, we need to change those positions. So right now they're not posted because we're working on that piece, but they can always look for them on East Longmeadow, ma.gov slash jobs. Just keep an eye out that way. And, and when they are actually posted, we could ask, do a constant contact or let people know um, through our meeting. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, as an advisory board here, Donna, I think uh, with us, you know, from a cross section of professionals that we have on this board, I think maybe we could uh, help out with the the best practices or the needs of what, what, you know, the future holds in regards to IT knowledge, Excel knowledge, whatever it might be. Um, and I know, Jordy, you're going to maybe present to us my rec um, or not. I don't know, but uh, at least getting that out there from a, you know, skill set standpoint. Right. Good. So, I th Jessica, I think since you're you're like right there, you know, maybe help out with what, what's best needed for skill sets. Okay. You know, from, from an advisory standpoint, I mean, that's what we're here for is to help mm -hmm. Donna with, uh, you know, build out kind of like uh, what we have a vision for these two opportunities, possibly just from a skill set <laughs> standpoint. To be very helpful for her and Jordy. All right. Um, my rec desk or my rec. Jordy, you ready now? Yes, I am home and ready. <laughs> All right. Um, we have XXX members with XXXXX household. <laughs> so we did launch MyREC, and it's very important for anybody watching and any resident, non-resident that has participated or wanting to participate uh, with programs moving forward. Um, that we're going to be saying goodbye to rec desk and moving to a new software called my rec. Um, and a new account is required in order to use the software. We're not transferring any, anything over to this new software. It has to be started from scratch. Um, and one of the most important things that we're trying to convey to residents and anybody trying to sign up for an account is, um, Duplicate accounts and um, overdue balances are going to be required. Um, so if you are looking to create a new account and you do have an overdue balance in Rectus, you have to make sure that you pay that off before you um, create try to create a household because um, off, our office staff will be going through all of the uh, pending accounts and uh, making sure that there's no outstanding balances. Um, in rec desk and we're also going to be making sure that there's not already an account in my rec um, for your household so um, and if there's anything that is stopping you from being approved from my rec you'll get a notification saying what the reasoning is and how to get a hold of us so um, as of right now there's 238 households signed up with the software and there's 620 total members um, between all of those different households. Um, so that's a good, a very good start. We launched it about a week ago. And as of right now, the only, um, the only program that we have up on my rec is the ice skating rink. We wanted to do a really soft launch and see how it works out um, and see what the, you know, what it looked like taking registrations and um, signing people up for different programs. So we're going to be starting, um, more spring registrations, non-youth sports registrations in my rec over the next couple of weeks. Um, so the best way to look out for um, that information is by going to eastlongmeadowrec.com. Um, we have a brand new website. Um, it's much more user-friendly. It lays out the information much more clearly um, and it gives you a great breakdown um, with all of the programs um, and activities that we currently have ongoing. Um, another common question that we're being asked is if they, if you have signed up with a program in rec desk, that's currently ongoing. Um, we're going to keep all of that information in rec or in, in rec desk. Um, we're not going to be transferring any 
program that you'd signed up for to my rec. It's just going to get too messy. Um, and we have this current software for another couple of months before it's phased out. So um, a lot of good information is going to be coming out um, and it's all going to be laid out, you know, very clearly uh, and, you know, better to the eye um, and, you know, a much easier website to use. And we're very excited and we're all here to answer any questions um, about the software. Um, and Jordy, have, sorry yes. to interrupt you here, but I think yep. this is a great opportunity where we could possibly do a demonstration at our, at our maybe our next uh, board meeting for the community. Yes, yeah. he's just live and, 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 you know, for posterity. And we kind of like do a, uh, a show and tell. Absolutely. That works for me. Perfect. Perfect. So I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but I, and, and you were on a flow. No, no, it's fine. Um, but I, I was just getting to the end, basically, that um, it's a great software to use. I've used I've used personally have used this before um, in another town that I've worked for. And um, it's it'll make, you know, our lives easier. It'll make residents lives easier. And anybody that's looking for information for any program, um, it'll make their lives easier as well. And it's a very important thing that um, with summer registration coming up next month um, for camp and um, the pool and all of the other summer activities that we have to make sure that you have an account um, to go ahead and create one and just familiarize yourself with the software before we do launch summer registrations. There's a big demand for, um, and we've been getting a lot of calls and questions about registrations for summer. So it is in very high demand this summer. And um, the best thing that we can tell residents as of right now is to just uh, create a new household and just to look out for any information through constant contact or just coming back to the website every so often to look for that most up-to-date information. So uh, other than that, I think, Don, I want to say I covered a good amount of it. But if you guys have any other specific questions, I can answer them for you. Uh, I, I look for, I look forward to a demonstration. Would that be done by you, Jordy, or by the vendor representative? Um, it would be, um, and I would really just primarily show the public side, um, but I, I can do it. Um, we've had six total hours of training with the representative. Um, and today was our final day of training. Um, so we do have a good amount of knowledge, but, um, for this purpose, I can, I could, I'd be more than happy to do it for you guys. Excellent. Excellent. I'd like to clarify that Jordy has a good deal of knowledge that I'm, uh, <laughs> Not quite there yet. <laughs> well, that, that's why we're going to do a demonstration and the whole community can see it live uh, with a professional like Jordy. That's why he's yeah. 30, 30 under 30. That's right. <laughs> can I All ask right. a quick question about that? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so I signed up Cameron for spring soccer on the old website. So does that doesn't carry over to the new website? No, it's just going to stay in Rectus. So you're not going to lose the registration or have to repay or anything like that. It's just going to stay. Um, it's just going to stay in Rectus through the end of the season. We're not going to be inputting any new programs into Rectus moving forward. We're only going to be putting programs into my rec. And Jess actually just created um, a, a sheet for us with all of the programs that are currently in Rectus and what we're going to be um, okay. you know, what programs are going to be housed under rec desk for the remainder of our time with them. And then everything moving forward is, um, it's going to be on my rec. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, so Jordy, just, just for, for clarification, that's going to take probably at least four seasons to kind of like filter through. Um, it'll be, by the, I'm assuming by the end of May, when most of these uh, sports and activities have wrapped up, will be will be completely phased out of rec desk. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So, um, 
if anybody doesn't, nobody else has any other information they want to share in regards to their uh, affiliations and, and representations. Um, we do have John Torsha who's going to join us here, and we're going to uh, present um, community preservation. Uh, this past, what was it Thursday or Wednesday night? Thursday night, Thursday. Um, community preservation, um, Stuart Sagnor from uh, community preservation, which it's not part of community preservation, but it affiliates itself and, and they're the experts for community preservation um, in the state of Massachusetts presented to the CPC board. And I found it to be very informational. And um, so John, I'd like you to, uh, yeah, I'm muted now. Okay, good. So please uh, talk a little bit about Stuart's presentation first before we go into the track and everything else. Sure. So basically, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so basically, Stuart, uh, who is the, uh, yeah, not officially affiliated with CPC in a nonprofit role, um, spoke to us about what CPC does. And actually, um, if you just give me a moment, I can actually bring up the PowerPoint. Oh, I have, okay, go ahead. Go through, uh, let's see here. I can. I have it loaded already, John, if you want. Oh, fan. okay. Um, yeah, so we, um, uh, just as I the guide here. Can everybody um, there see are it? a couple of different categories. Um, the seat. John, your 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 internet. Your, Mr. Mackey, I think we're gonna have to mute. Uh, um, so, uh, Tom, I'm not sure we'll be able to cite it down. Your your internet. I'm not sure. So, if John, if you can, for one moment. John, one moment, please. Can everybody see the presentation on the board or not? Okay. Uh, John, your internet's very choppy and in and out. Okay, right? I apologize. Um, is this, is it better now? I just um, logged out of a few things, so. There you go, it's better. All right, so better? tell me where you want, I'll, I'll, I'll man the controls here on the presentation. Sure, um, oh, we'll go down to the first uh, page here. Uh, We'll go to coalition services. So what a, what a couple of the things that this coalition provides, uh, they have a website, they, uh, as, as chair I get, um, they're uh, a monthly newsletter. Uh, they're also involved in pushing the CPC into other communities. Uh, there's 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, about 186 or so of them. Uh, are in the program, um, about eight or nine of them. Uh, it's supposed to pass either via town ballot or town meeting. Obviously, we have now the council, but some communities still have a uh, town meeting. Um, a number of them, 10, I'm sorry, it's 10 new communities adopted um, the CPC last year. East Long Meadow adopted it uh, quite some time ago, about I think maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, it's a fairly new program. Uh, so essentially there is a 1% surcharge on um, uh, property taxes and that small amount of money goes uh, into an annual fund that's given to our town as well as a uh, statewide trust fund that is available. So that trust fund um, is diced up between all these communities. So our, our community benefits from both. Um, and then as, as you can see here, there is a um, different uh, areas where the money goes. Uh, a lot of the money goes to our undesignated or flexible fund. Uh, but we also have, uh, as it pertains to your committee, open space and recreation. We also have uh, housing and uh, historic um, funds, as well as a small uh, uh, amount for different administrative funds that are, are needed. Uh, so what we're hoping to do is, we haven't done for a little bit, but what we're going to be moving on to doing is creating an annual CPA uh, budget. Uh, so that this will allow us to decide based on the different projects that come before us. We have a uh, uh, April 1st uh, deadline for projects and an October 1 deadline for projects. 
uh, we're going to get a better idea, hopefully, of um, the type of projects that come through, and then we can base the money that we're getting in and the money that we already have based on what some of these different groups in town uh, are bringing forward to us. Uh, so it's a little bit different from a normal town budget where it's top down, whereas ours is more of a, uh, as the graph can see, uh, the graphic uh, kind of a uh, down up type uh, thing. We're sort of planning based on these different uh, projects that come forward. And, uh, and so there are a few um, different to things. To, com sorry. to comment to that, John. In, in, in this presentation. So from a town budget perspective, that comes from a town manager, you know, to, to the to the board, to the select board down from community preservation projects. They are from community based from the bottom up. So that, that's what this is trying to reference in regards to the budget. Yeah, so we have, um, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so we have a couple of different rules. Uh, this was actually extremely helpful because obviously there are different questions about, you know, there might be projects that are, um, you know, really. Oh. So John cut out again. Um, so one of the points here was this is, as we, I sent to everybody on the board, this is, uh, I think, um, Slide 17. Project were, um, oh. I'm sorry. John, you, you, you had cut out again. Okay. All um, right. So I was just commenting that this, this is probably the most important slide as Stuart explained to everybody. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of questions about what can be funded, what cannot be funded. For example, it was very enlightening to hear Stuart discuss. <clears throat> there was a misnomer about uh, bathrooms. And, and so the misnomer is that you can't use CPC or community preservation funds to fund a restroom or a snack shack. That is not the case. So for example, at the high school, there's a dire need of a snack shack and restroom facilities. So using sandy cans that can actually be used for community preservation dollars. All right. That's a, that's a prime example. But you cannot have an administrative office within that snack shack um, that would disallow that that to be used for community preservation money. So as you can see here, um, anybody have any questions so far about what can and cannot be used for community preservation? I think getting the more information out to the community about what this is for um, is vitally important, not just for open space and recreation, but for historic housing and uh, undesignated. John. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these, the, you know, this is this is resources that is available to the community um, for any type of different project that falls under these kind of three overarching and main. Um, uh, uh, different areas that uh, that applicants can utilize. Uh, there's also for your larger projects, um, you know, you're able to bond and you're able to uh, cover um, certain projects, especially uh, using future surcharge amounts that the town is expecting to incur. You can bond against those, uh, which is which is this was all very vital information and. Um, I think Stuart, and I can definitely pass it on to your uh, committee, Tom, at that point, uh, there's gonna be hopefully at some point soon a whole PowerPoint presentation just on bonding. Uh, so sort of to give our committee and then I can pass it on to this committee some more insight into some of the specifics uh, that go towards uh, being able to appropriate funds to these different projects and particularly larger projects. Thank you, John. And in one point of note, like for example, the Pine Knoll Pool was a bonded uh, CPC project and also the acquisition of Brown property was also a bonded acquisition under recreation, open space and recreation. 
And I actually have uh, some new financial numbers. So between both of those projects that are bonded, our our committee over the last fiscal year uh, paid a hundred and two thousand, uh, round up to a hundred and three thousand dollars between uh, both the principal uh, and the interest on both of those projects. Uh, so that has sort of been a, a long time commitment that this committee's had. I think both of those projects they predate me. Tom might know when they were. Uh, Mr. Chair, you might know when they were um, originally funded, um, but I know there's a couple of years left uh, on those at least. Yep. And, and you know, th this is, brings up a great point about the power of bonding and, and, and the multiplicity of it. Um, for example, um, the pool was roughly, let's call it $800,000. Uh, the acquisition of Brown Farm, off the top of my head, I think it was $1.3. Uh, million dollars. So you're having you have a a, a overall two plus uh, million dollar projects combined, uh, costing the community. What is it, John? Uh, that would be uh, probably close to two to over two million. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, the total, but the but the payment this year was a hundred and three thousand. And in every year, we do receive how much, John? So this this past year, and we haven't collected all of the surcharges from what I'm uh, aware of. The amount was two hundred and thirty five thousand uh, that was collected between state funds and uh, the local surcharge, which has not been, I believe, fully collected yet. So that number I would expect to go up, not not significantly, but it, it will likely go up. And just for informational purposes, we're about three, four years away from fulfilling the bond at uh, Pine Old Pool? Uh, I believe so. I'm not sure what the actual uh, the years are on that, but I can definitely um, get that answer. Okay. Uh, as, as a board, does anybody have any questions, additional questions as we're rolling along here? All right. All right. I'm going to go to, uh, there we go. Yeah. So some of the things, there are certain limitations on what the spending can go towards. Uh, and this was obviously a question that had come up on Thursday. We uh, are careful. We can't uh, put money into ma yearly maintenance things, uh, different operating expenses. Uh, we, you know, we can't help fund, you know, certain municipal, uh, rev you know, yearly revenue type things. Uh, when it comes to, you know, recreation, uh, it's outdoor projects, so things that might take place fully inside uh, that would probably not fit the criteria. Um, of uh, of that section, um, and then a couple things regarding uh, you know historical has to be you know following those uh, standards laid out by the Massachusetts uh, Secretary of the Commonwealth, um, as well as uh, we can't have yes asset purchases, as in the case of Brownfield uh, from a few years back. And this uh, coalition is available uh, to anyone. I think uh, towards the end here, um, Stuart offered uh, his contact information. Uh, I've had many different email interactions with him. He's a fantastic guy uh, and has been extremely helpful in answering my questions. Uh, I am fairly new to this committee. Uh, so um, he's been very helpful in that sense. And if any of you have questions uh, you know, uh, about CPC, please reach out to him. He's very... Uh, uh, friendly, very helpful uh, to CPC related things. So uh, any questions? Um, all right, well, uh, John, thank you for uh, going back and forth with this. I, um, I think this board represents a, a very important piece of community preservation. And um, I think, you know, the knowledge base, and we greatly appreciate Stuart putting this together for us. Um, so, and everybody here on the, on the board has received this presentation. If you haven't, please, I'll send it again. Um, great information. I always reference uh, slide 17, especially, you know, we're advocates in the community. There are questions that people have. Um, reference slide 17, this slide right here. What can and cannot be used for CPC. 
So John, uh, I think we need to take the next layer of this and, 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 you know, I know you wanted to talk about the track project. Um, so. So what, uh, our committee had discussed on Thursday was a application that we had received, uh, from our, our original October one deadline. Uh, this would include, uh, resurfacing the track. Uh, it takes about eight to 10 years to complete uh, the co The cost would be about 134,000 uh, with another 28,000 uh, coming from the revolving fund that the high school has for different rentals uh, and different, um, uh, different, th different things that they uh, bring in. Uh, this track is not only used for uh, high school purposes, uh, but the community at large can use it. Uh, and I know plenty of different events have uh, been held there, both uh, part of the high school as well as um, you know private events. People are allowed to rent it or simply just walk on it or take a run on it or a jog. Um, so this is uh, you know something that I see as um, kind of part of that you know master plan of things that you know we hope to you know eventually fund. Um, you know this is this falls into sort of that recreation um, type category. Um, so hopefully, you know, we had some questions about, I think, the budget and, you know, my hope was to, you know, bring this committee up to speed on the project. Uh, so I appreciate Tom uh, for giving me this opportunity to, uh, to have a discussion on it. Uh, so we hope to bring this back up at our committee meeting next month um, and answer any kind of outstanding questions uh, related to it. Um, if anybody would like uh, a copy of the application, if you don't already have it and you want to take a look at it, um, I'm more than happy to send that over as well. Okay. Well, seeing there's no questions. Um, so, uh, John, I, I really, you know what, I, I don't know the protocol on this, right? Because I, I I do have the, the project here in front of me, the paddock, right? And and generally when, for example, the playground happened in utilizing CPC dollars, there was a conversation, at least a, a back and forth with the recreation board. Um, so just from a, a standpoint of the person who represents recreation on this board, I actually abstained from voting on this because I did not have a, a, a vote uh, amongst us as a board uh, to say yes or no. We, we, um, you know, we, we see this project as a yes or a no. So um, with that said, um, I'm hoping that the, the school committee or and or Gordon, who's, who's the uh, individual from the school department who submitted this um, would have a chance to talk with the rec and deem the uh, importance of this. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I can't uh, speak on behalf of them, but I wanted to at least um, give this opportunity to give sort of, um, obviously uh, one being the, um, you know, talking about the importance, what this committee does. And then, I, you know, I'm not an expert on this project. I wasn't the applicant, but just sort of explaining the um, general mechanics of it. I mean, there's no specific policy about, you know, different, you know, uh, committees talking about it. My job mostly is to bring the um, bring the applications forward, work with uh, the different committee members to try to best uh, ans get their questions answered. Uh, and having you know a forum where anybody from the public can come, where we can have the applicants directly answering questions. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes nature of it, um, but I try to make sure everybody on our committee uh, and you know committees like this, their voices are heard if they have different questions on a project. So for example, John, um, this board uh, put forward with Donna, uh, we did put forward a playground project at Pine Knoll. Um, where do we stand? So I had had uh, learned a little bit more of the steps of 
bringing it to town council. What my hope is, uh, and I think maybe I'll send a, uh, I'm hoping to send a cover letter this week, probably to you and Donna, and I can also have the rest of the committee um, be CC'd in on it. My hope is I'm gonna, It's the Russian spies. Shut them down. <laughs> John. On it. Um, John, uh, can you step back a little bit? Because you uh, you cut out for about 10, 11 second delay there. OK, I, I'm, I'm sorry. This computer uh, is not being very frustrating this evening. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, I'll go back. Um, my hope is for this week is to send a uh, cover letter uh, to for both you and Donna and and the rest of the committee can be CC'd in on it, uh, just explaining uh, the project in a very quick form uh, and just uh, telling the council uh, we endorsed it unanimously or recommended it unanimously uh, and where we feel the uh, money should come out of. Uh, the town council ultimately has um, authority on every project that we have. We are essentially a recommending type committee, um, but obviously I think they would take our recommendation and usually go that way. But um, so that is, so pretty much that is gonna be formalized, I hope this week. And then I know the town council's meeting tomorrow, so we won't be on their um, agenda for tomorrow. Um, but for the next meeting, my hope is to start discussing um, this project um, and then so that the town council can see it and we can start getting an answer and hopefully have this you know, project ready for um, people at Pine Knoll for the uh, summer months when things start to get warmer and less COVID hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, John. So as you can see, there, there's various parts of our community that are coming together um, in regards to the long-term visionary plan of the town. And, and John, you're aware of the Saturday uh, visionary plan uh, at 10 a.m., correct? Yes, yeah, I know that is, I believe, something that our, uh, I also sit on the planning board. Uh, that is something that I believe Bethany Yao from uh, the planning department has taken on. Uh, so that the master plan is really vital uh, in sort of dictating where the town goes on a whole host of things, housing, um, you know, commercial development, uh, you know, our parks and recreation, you know, being an area that you guys are very passionate in. So I think it's gonna be a, uh, I have uh, another engagement that morning, but I'm going to try to uh, hopefully um, be on that as well to listen in. All right, so uh, the forum is everybody. I mean, here we have John, please, if you have any questions, please feel free. If not, John, I'll, I'll let you get on with your, uh, your evening. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you for what you do. Have a great thank evening. You, John. Oh, I'm sorry. So, is that a question? Right. Oh. I was just waving by. Let's give you Nanu Nanu. Good evening, everyone. Bye bye. So, uh, as a board, um, that was put forward uh, with CPC um, Thursday night. The uh, the track and um, at the high school for a resurfacing project of one hundred thirty four thousand seven hundred twenty two dollars and forty nine cents. Um, we've had some debate about this. Uh, we do have some newer members that might not have been on this, uh, this past summer, but this was put forward. Well, probably what Donna three, four months ago, at least now, maybe even five months. Um, honestly, the protocols on this are just thrown to the wind and, and I don't want I don't want to have an adversarial slash contentious relationship with the school department, the school committee, you know, our board. I'm trying to get a collaborative uh, of, you know, the long-term visionary plan. And, you know, um, you can see on the CPC uh, outlines, there are some, it's a gray area when it comes to maintenance. And um, it, it's a gray area, right? 
And, you know, that track's been around for 10 years. Um, some of us walk the track together. Some of us have walked the track, you know, individually. Um, we, as a recreation activity, we don't have any sponsored slash recreational activities that go on, Donna, am I speaking incorrectly there, that go on the track? We don't have a youth track team, do we? No, we don't, but interesting enough, um, we are gonna start a running program through the rec that was, it was, for, um, the schools did run it, it's called, was called Girls on the Run, but Christine is a runner and she would like to incorporate boys also, but you're correct, at this time we don't. In the past, prior to me getting here, they, there were camps that used the uh, track. So. I, I will say uh, as somebody who's run on the track and gotten thrown off the track because of practices, lacrosse practices, balls flying around, there is limited time frames for the community to use the track. Um, it, I, I'm trying to tiptoe here. Look, I see the value in it and we are going to have to have maintenance on it, but that was something that was, in 2011, when the, the facility was constructed, that maintenance was, maintenance was known. Okay. I'm throwing everything out there on the table. $134,000 uh, can go a long way. As I just mentioned to you with the pool. Okay. The pool, Brown Farm, at $103,000 a year was bonded out on a $2 million property. So looking at it as a whole, um, then coming to light that uh, restroom facilities and snack shack can be part of an overall build, uh, making a, 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 a larger plan than just one facility, incorporating center field for lights, Brown property, maybe the the barn actually can be used here if we opened it up on the sides and use it as a type of a pavilion and we put the skating rink inside the barn. Don, maybe uh, you can comment on looking inside that barn, not just me talking. Uh, comment about how large it is as, as a committee member here. Uh, yeah, it, was, it surprised me. Uh, I had never been inside the barn before. It's kind of L-shaped when you look at it, so you don't really know the dimensions until you really get inside. But uh, it was it was a lot better shape than I thought. It was in the uh, structural inside beams and stuff looked in really good shape. The roof is a little rough, might need some patchwork. But other than that, it looked uh, good, and it was very, very large. And I could, that definitely was uh, very appealing. And it looks like we could, that could be something monstrous in this, in this town that we could use for all kinds of different things. All right. Can I, can I step in here? Um, yeah, it, but one, one moment, Don, one, one okay. second. Don, what, what's, what, what's your profession? What do you deal with engineering at all? Or what do you, what do you? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wouldn't be making a recreation salary. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Darn, darn. <laughs> oh, oh sorry. I'm not, I am. I am not an engineer. Uh, but you, do you have building background uh, at all? Yeah. Well, I you know I do. I deal with uh, inspections of, of buildings <laughs> for some, certain types of materials and stuff like that. But I'm no expert on structural. But I know when I see beams and they look like they're in good shape. I mean, we saw a slight little termite damage on some of the uh, vertical uh, posts that we were looking at, but uh, the, the stuff, the horizontal trusses and things like that, those looked in really good shape. Um, it didn't look like a lot, a lot of tremendous amount of water damage on anything either, except, you know, a few puddles on the ground, ice here and there, but it, it, I, was, it just, I was surprised. The inside, is actually all sand, right? It's all sand. It used to be a corral where horses used to do trotting inside. Um, so, so Donna, sorry, I just wanted to, you know, elaborate more on what Don saw. No, I think it's great to bring up that uh, all of this with the new members. Um, 
and I, I think it's good to, to dream, but I'd also want us to really work closely with the, the master plan, the visioning plan, uh, put our two cents worth in there, uh, give Mary a, a chance to do some research that she'd like to do. Um, I just don't, you know, I mean, we can always dream because if we don't, we're not going to get there. But um, I really, really believe in the master plan process. They're a lot of fun. I've got, I've gone through a couple of them and I'm kind of a geek with those things. So uh, this is all good stuff to put forth for the master plan. But if you don't know, if you're not educated on this, everybody, mm -hmm. we, we need to make sure that we have a seat at the table in this visionary plan, this master plan. And if we don't know what CPC can or cannot be used for, then, you know, it might go somewhere else. So, as you heard, I have a question. Can I ask Donna a question on that? As far as our vision, yeah. are you putting forth the plan that we have and that we drew up many years ago for um, Brown Farm into that master plan? Yes, Bethany's um, studied that pretty. Uh, the planner, Bethany Yao, has looked at the Brown Farm, and she's very familiar with it. Thank you. And so may, maybe we should probably have a, a, a conversation offline in a, in a subcommittee as to what, maybe there's other additional enhancements on the visionary master plan. For example, it's her heritage is also part of that, Donna, correct? So you have heritage, brown property study. You know, there's a lot of studies that have been done and tens of thousands of dollars have been spent already. Oh, that's another thing, Donna, maybe we, um, the additional $113,000 for the additional study for the study at Heritage, how that's gonna be tabled. That's in the works. That's on um, the, the C CIP plan for this year, this coming year. When you say CIP, we're going to acronym again. Oh, capital improvements plan. Thank you. Or projects. I Which is not to be funded by community preservation money. That's that's correct. Well, no, I take that back. We did go to part of it's on the CIP plan, but we are also using the monies from CPC to for the initial funds. Donna, I think there's a misconception there because I think that's that 113,000 is being pulled. So, I mean, I think we need clarification tomorrow on that. Okay. Because that, that was part of a conversation that, again, will happen on the CPC on Thursday night. All right, I'll get that for you. Sorry about that. All right. So, I, I, I don't know how to proceed with this, but... Uh, for those who have seen the study, I mean, I think we need to have more of a conversation about this. Um, so, as a group, I think I think we have to at least formulate that we're for or against, or we see the value in it. Uh, because I did, I don't want to vote just as one person. I am a representative, Jessica. In terms of the maintenance, because I did watch the very lengthy CPC meeting, and uh, it was great. It was super informative. But I keep getting hung up on the maintenance piece and whether or not this is something that every 8 to 10 years, as they said, that's how often it needs to be resurfaced. Are they going to continue to come back to CPC every 8 to 10 years if it gets approved, looking for them to fund it again? Um, cause obviously that's a large chunk of money and there's a lot of projects that, you know, people have been tossing around. It's, it's no surprise. Obviously we know our fields aren't in the greatest shape, um, amongst many other projects that we've been, you know, tabling and, and sitting in the background. So I just want to make sure that we don't have to assume that every eight years, a large sum of money such as that will be taken off the purview of recreation to do the track at the school. I guess that's where I'm a little confused. Yeah, and I, I, 
you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it's a maintenance thing uh, that does need to be done every eight to 10 years. Um, my father-in-law um, actually did the track at Belchertown and I brought him out to that track um, earlier. I mean, it might be worse off now because of, of winter, uh, but we went out, uh, I want to say October timeframe, early October, we walked the track and, you know, from his expert knowledge of actually putting together a track for uh, a school department, uh, his feeling was there is no need to currently replace the track surface. So, but that, did that's he, one individual's opinion. Tom, did he say that the spots that are, people are concerned about could be repaired, your father-in-law? No. 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 This is a resurfacing. To, what they're they're trying to avoid is going all the way down to the asphalt. Yeah. Um, just keep in mind, everybody, we don't have the bathroom facilities nor the the stands to host any MIAA events no. as we are currently situated as a facility. The other point I, I I'd, I'd like to bring forward is and the reason why I asked Donna, Donna this is how many participants use the track as opposed to other facilities that need repair. For example, if we installed restrooms in a snack shack, that would be great for the concert series. That would be great for the overall community for overall recreation. Well, Tom, I and I understand what you're saying, but I also um, I don't want to get too much in the in the weeds of this until we talk about the master plan. But we're I mean, asked, and I don't. I don't think I, I, my point on it, though, I, 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 I get what you're saying about the visionary master plan. But if it comes forward through CPC as a recreational item. OK, then if I'm representing recreation, I just want a consensus or at least a vote or something from our, our board as a representative of recreation. It's only fair. And, and by the way, as you saw with the presentation, recreation, open space, historical housing. We have representatives from each one of those on, on the CPC board, the Community Preservation Board, but there's other at-large members. So I'm voting as a representative of this board, not at large. Um, can I say something? Please. I would definitely agree with you 100% that I would not feel that project resurfacing of the track is something that would benefit the overall community and specifically to our function is not really something that would benefit REC in the long run. And I wouldn't want those um, funds kind of deemed, you know, oh, well, this was appropriated to REC. So stop asking for stuff. I don't think that's fair because it's really not something that, you know, really benefits track and I mean, you know, wreck in general at all. I mean, girls on the run and stuff like that, while we may introduce that, um, who knows if it'll even 100% be held at the track. It may be done in fields. It may be done around the grassy areas, you know. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would be 100% on board that it is not something that I would vote for, um, personally, as, a you know, someone who um, is – every single season involved in sports, I have never used that track. And there's a lot of people that probably would feel the same. So, that's it. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for participating. Just so I know there's a lot of just, and maybe just my being the newbie, not so sort of understanding the overarching, you know, master plan or uh, any of the other, you know, the CPC stuff. Um, it, I'm ta in taking a lot of it right now, but I'm still sort of, it's a little bit murky for me as far as like what, you know, what all of this means to, to the rec board per se. And 
like the influence, I guess, that we have, what kind of feedback should be, you know, we should be giving or providing. Well, there's a thought process. One, one side of the, 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 the coin would say, this is on school property. And as, as was stated on that CPC community preservation meeting, it was a school project. Okay. But yet asking for recreational dollars funded by the community preservation fund. So it's, it's this gray area. It's a difference between maintenance and also recreational activity. Right. And if so I'm asking as a board, where do you stand? And by the way, this doesn't have to be a binding vote. This is open form discussion, which we need to have. I agree with you, Tom, being that I've gone through the high school with two children and doing events and activities, I think, and also being a track runner in many, and not MMIA, MIA, but New York State involved and collegiate level, track is important if you're able to hold that meet. The track is functional. If you look at five years ago, four years ago, Long Meadows track was just dirt and silt. Still had plenty of people doing recreation walking on it. Our track out there right now is safe enough for recreation work. It is safe for track team to practice on. But again, going back to your, I'm sorry, Donna, the visionary plan and the master plan, I think they have to do definitely a facility for restrooms to make it even so it's sanitary for people to be using and functioning out there in an event, whether it's a football game or recreating. Um, in defense of them, they do leave the lights on until 9.30, 10 o'clock, so you have the opportunity to recreate on that track and or practice a recreation event within the confines of the track. So they do work on both sides. People have the opportunity. Five in the morning, there's a dozen people out there every morning. So it, they do use it for recreation, but is it deemed necessary to put a new surface on it at this point in time, again, to what Jessica said, eight years from now, I have to do it again, or 10 years from now, do it again. So I think at this time, the funding for that is not, not necessary. I think it's functional and safe the way it is, or functional, usable the way it is. I think the a restroom facility is more important to that environment at this point in time. Well, anybody else want to uh, comment? Um, just kind of going back to what Jessica was saying uh, when you, they put the they put the surface in in 2011. You said, Tom. Yes. And it was eight to ten years. It, it's it's due for maintenance. Yes. So when you when the first if we did give it maintenance, is that maintenance guaranteed to last eight years, or is that guaranteed just to last three or four years? Oh, no, no matter what, you're going to have to do something on the, you're going to have to resurface it every eight to 10 years. But when you're, so after it's brand new and you do eight to 10 years and then you get more use of it, you're saying that that first bit of maintenance makes it last another eight years? Yes. Really? Okay. Well, I think it falls into environmental also, and I think you could attest to it. I mean, if you have a hot, hot year or a lot of water or rain, any imperfections like a floor, a little water gets under the asphalt, this thing starts popping and failing because of water, because of weather, because of heat, because of a lot of things. So I think the factors are unknown, but eight, 10 years, I think is their estimate. It could be this time we put it down. It could be six years from now we have to do it again. You don't know. That's their average estimate, I think. You might get 12 years out of it before it's necessary. But again, it's still going to be a six-figure resurface at that time. So if we, don't, if we don't do it now and the cracks get bigger and water gets underneath there and it starts expanding and contracting, it could get into worse shape in three years. And then it might it could be, be a total. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is kind of like the resurface. If you go all the way down, it might end up costing $300,000, right? And so, this, this, but once again, is this part of the overall, as Donna keeps on reminding us, the overall plan? The visionary. 
but it, it's kind of like it, for for the new members here, we as a rec board got the snot kicked out of us about recreation this, recreation that, recreation this when it came to heritage and all that stuff because everybody thinks it's like recreation money, recreation money, recreation money. And I just want to be on the same page because we've asked for recreation dollars for a playground. We've rec we had, we bonded for a pool. We bonded for Brown property for which nothing has really happened except for gardens. Okay. And beautiful trails, but most of the community doesn't know that. So we are recreation board, Donna is a recreation director. All we are is an advisory board, but we have a recommendation. So that answers your, your question, Dan, about the purview of rec recreation board in this. Okay. Any other comments, Nancy? You're quiet tonight. Mike, Robin? No, I had expressed it in our earlier conversation that I walked it with somebody that knew something about tracks and they didn't feel that it was in that much of disrepair. And, and I think if the high school, the school department should have taken into consideration in their budgeting that this was gonna to have to be done somewhere in the future. Whereas all the income that comes in from that stadium and that track and that field goes into their coffers, well, if I'm not mistaken. To be fair if to I'm wrong, please, the school if department. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Yeah, to, to be fair to the school department, the school department is going to put the total project, um, they're asking for 134,722. Um, the total project cost was 162,722 and they are contributing $28,000 that over the last, I don't know, let's say 10 years has been collected in, in fees. Okay. Thank you, Tom. And they did put a, a very robust, um, fee schedule that they have, uh, for custodial fees and for the, the, the price per hour, uh, for the athletic stadium, as they call it, and the light use and the practice per hour cost. For rentals? Yes. Okay, thank you. And Donna, that, that includes our school use contract, correct? Is it not? No, that's not, that does not include that. That's separate. So when I have a child that's registered for football, okay, and, and football uses that facility, so there's a school use fee for the rec department that that pays the school department, but you're saying that this fee is not included? No, that fee that we charge is for the custodian to be there on site while we're using the turf because of um, some contractual agreement. Uh, what what the fees that, that was included in the CPC application is if an outside group comes in and rents the facility. Okay. All right. Because I see in the group classification it says East Long Meadow Recreation Department per contract. I I clarified that with Gordon. That's per contract per when say um, I don't know that lacrosse tournament comes in. They sign a contract for a rental agreement for the track. Sure when you say lacrosse tournament, or what are you referring to? An outside group that comes in and has not our East Long Meadow group. I mean, our East Long Meadow group might participate in it, but if an outside organization comes in and rents the facility, any facilities, it goes into that rental fee. That's not part of our school use agreement contract. 
Okay. So that's like team four, one, three that rents it or correct. When, yes. when, the, when the mutiny used to play over there. Yes. Just, just so it's out in the public <laughs> it's communicated. All right, Mike, you're quiet out there. What are you, what are you, car? I'm in a car, yeah. I, no, I, I agree. I thought you were going to do a, I, uh, want to I thought you were going to do a field view of, of the ice rink for us. <laughs> I, I should have. I, um, I did walk the track as well, and I, I agree with, with you guys that I feel like the money could be used elsewhere, personally. I don't feel, I don't think the track is in that bad of shape. Um, so I do think that, that doing something like bathrooms would be a, a more useful recreational way of using funds in that area. All right. All right. Well, with, with that, I will send out this again to the new members and we can vote on this at the next meeting. All right. I'll send this out to the group. Um, I was hoping that the school department or would uh, you know, just at least clarify some of this information, but I think it's important that you get this information, All right? Has anybody from th there that's proposing this from the school department been invited to come and speak to us? I mean, I thought in the past that usually when something was recreational, they all passed it by us, at least. There was a certain thought that it was because it was school property, it was not necessary. On their side? Uh, by a school committee member. Thank you. I, I know that, you know, uh, the superintendent is, is has great lines of communication with Donna. And I, I know the athletic director does too. So, you know, I know that we've worked well together in the past. Well, I know we have worked well then together in the past. I was just wondering why it, nobody came and spoke of their reasoning with us, that's all. Yeah. You answered it. Okay. Um, so um, that is kind of like new old news uh, that, that surfaced um, to make everybody aware. And um, if anybody else doesn't have anything else, uh, I am going to Make a motion to adjourn. I just had a, I just, I just had a quick question that that's the, this event that's going on Saturday, this visionary event. Is that something that's on Facebook or is that going to be? How, how do we attend that? Donna? Yes, um, I, I sent out a, a flyer on it that said how to get into it, but I'll resend that for you. Okay. Got it's it. also been on our constant contact because I'm trying to get as much of the community involved in this as we can. And please, everybody here, friends and family, get it out to, all right? All right, any more discussion? Uh, Kevin seconded the uh, motion to adjourn. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. That passes unanimously. All right. It is 728, Nancy. I have that. Next meeting is February 22nd. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Have a great hey, evening. Thanks. Good night, guys. Hey, good night. Bye.